Oh, well, now, guys, before you before you start, check out Mascherino. Yes. <laughs> All right, here we are in the game. Sorry, check out what you said. I was just saying the gist of it was definitely check out Macherino.com and you can add money for free by using the gathering or you can support them by just throwing in uh, as much money as you want using either PayPal or something else. Also, we have some stretch goals there. So if we reach uh, an amount of money, which is going to be specified by Shaft in the chat, I believe it's 200 bucks. Don't quote me on that. Uh, we are going to have a, an interview with uh, whoever of these guys uh, wins, which is very strongly looking to be the man spawning in the bottom left corner of New Kirk Precinct. He is a very, very long time a member of the StarCraft 1 and the StarCraft 2 community. He is former teammate of Seed back in the days of Foyu and MVP. It's Gumiho. And his opponent in the bottom right hand corner. The blue Protoss representing Team Revolution. It is Seed. All right, and I wanted to make that very smooth where I just sidestep real quick in order to say this thing and, and, and then go further with what I was trying to say. And of course, I've completely, completely lost my train of thought. Well, yeah, all right, right there. And uh, one thing I'd love to point out about Gumiho's overall play style is that even though he's using the multi-part attacks, etc., those things, a lot of the big engagements simply come down to his phenomenal positioning. He mm -hmm. is able to get into all the little cracks around. He's like water, and he takes the path of least resistance, somehow finds it, and then ends up with those fantastic concaves in position. A lot of the style we're seeing out of Gumiho is his ability to control his army and get into good positions, which really matters on Newkirk Precinct because it's such a big wide open map. He has even more potential than games one and or than game one and game two in this game three to be able to get those good positions in the Protoss army. So Seed really needs to watch out about moving out into the wide open area against Gumiho's style. Yeah, very much. And I wonder very much if he's uh develop this style by uh, looking at some of his uh, older styles. He was a more heavier mech player uh, back in the days when mech wasn't as viable as such. And with tanks, it is just so, so important to get that uh, positioning right. So he may just be a little bit more experienced at this uh, than uh, some of his contemporaries. Yeah. The, the key right here is Gumiho is just the hip guy. Ooh, he's gonna lose the Reaper in the end, but he's the hip guy. He realizes, you know what, everybody's playing mech right now or people are trying. No, 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 no. I can't play mech, they buffed it. I always have to win from a disadvantage. That's just me right here. But I love this. Mothership 4 comes in from Seed, switching it up just a little bit. This is exactly how Gumiho managed to take an early advantage in game two. Let's take out the two SCVs, but instead he's going to, uh, instead of focusing on a third, he's going to start shooting at a really foul. Does leave himself a little bit vulnerable to getting that Mothership Court sniped later on, but uh, did get a full scout off. Well, well, with that uh, starport invisible, he does actually know uh, what his opponent is going to be doing. Or mostly, at least. I mean, at this point, you get a drop, and whether that's two widow mines, uh, or whether it's two widow mines, a bunch of marines, or in this case, six marines and a widow mine, well, uh, you know that something's coming your way air wise. I like that change to go just with the one widow mine because we have seen Seed always prioritize a very quick robotics facility and observer. So Gumiho will try to counter Seed right here and Seed has an opportunity to maybe get an early volley off against this medevac, but I'm not sure if it's going to happen. Also, put an overcharge capacity, baits out of front of an overcharge, and puts himself in a nice position to get some damage done. Where is that observer? Oh, no, that observer perfectly in place to take out that widow mine, but. Gets a nice position on the natural mineral line. Doesn't get a kill, but supports a little bit of mining loss. And now we've just got Adepts versus Marines. Very nicely micro. Fantastic Marines. micro. Beautiful micro. Resident Glaives just finishes up, and Seed may have the opportunity to push out again like he tried to do in game one, but he's only on three gates, and Blink may have been a little bit better of an option, especially versus this multi-pronged air style we're going to see right now out of Seed, yeah, or pardon me, out of Gumiho. Very nice position with that Liberator, there's no pylon in range. Now, with the Stalkers coming in there, of course he's going to shoot them away, but oh! <laughs> Like, yeah, go on, shoot against me. I dare you. Uh, and in the meantime, going back into that natural, gets a, uh, an SCV, gets a probe even, and gets on out of there. 
And even though Seed has managed to push Gumiho back, still a lot of damage has been inflicted. And when you're playing at this high of a level, those little things, especially in the early game, start to snowball. We haven't seen too many workers killed. Three, well, Seed did manage to kill two with his mothership, of course, so he's evened it up slightly, but it's not looking too good when he has to pull all his workers each time and when his holds are not clean. They're a little bit of a scrappy hold each time, even though he does hold. Ah, uh, so he moves out, sees that mine on that third base position. Uh, there's a little bit of a switch up as well on the side of Gumio as he only built the one tank and he's since then switched his factory to build a reactor. I'm not even sure whether he's going to use that himself or whether he's going to uh, move a barracks on in there. Or might he's might very well do that. Lines. I guess the other option is to either do some cyclones or hellion. So actually, you could see double widow mine. Really, there's a lot of utility for that reactor. Mm -hmm. It's not quite as normal that you see, but more importantly, right now Gumiho is at Seed's third base. Seed spots it with his observer, but I don't know if he's going to have enough to push this back. We'll have to see. With Blink just being a few seconds away, he probably will. But mm -hmm. he has to be very careful about moving into the double liberator. Yep. And uh, only the one siege tank this time, so he can just go in there if he so chooses. Oh, is he going to commit to that Dang. game? Oh. Nope. No, 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 no. Discretion, better part of valor or some such a weirdness. Uh, as this time it is Seed who's going to try and do some multi pronger as he gets his uh, warp prism on in position. Over oh, this there. is going to be right as Gumiho moves out. This is maybe the prime opportunity for Seed to get damage done. Looks like there's nothing in the main, nothing in Gumiho's natural either. We do have one missile turret on the way. But more importantly, Seed moves out into the middle of the map. And this is generally where Gumiho has been really good at positioning. Oh, Seed may have had the prime opportunity to blink up underneath the two liberators of Gumiho and maybe take down the siege tank. But since he's a little bit unsure and pulls out, he's going to lose that opportunity. But he at least will keep an observer on top of Gumiho's forces, or at least in the middle. Uh, unfortunately, all the uh, reinforcements of Gumio has been uh, popping inside that area that he just tried to attack. I think he got an SCV there. Uh, got out with everything though, so that's fine. But it's not actually optimal what he wanted. And he's going to try and sandwich that remaining forces. Because we did lose that War Prism yeah. outside of the range of this cast. At least the Adepts were still alive for a few seconds. They can try to pull Gumiho out of position, but Seed's not going to be in the middle of the map quick enough to be able to utilize that. Gumiho's two Liberators, or three Liberators, spot Seed's army, and now Gumiho's going to find a phenomenal Concave right here. Guardian Shield does go up. Liberators also go down. Thankfully for Seed, the Seed Shanks were not sieged up. Neither were the Widow Mines. It was just the DPS out of the bio, but he's going to basically just kind of have the front part of his army shaved off, and he has to pull back now, and his army is almost broken up into two sections. It's not going to be good for Seed. Yep, uh, reached, uh, that uh, engagement at bay once again, but uh, this time at the cost of some a very nice force fields, but yeah, he's gonna have to keep pulling on back there because he can't engage his army. We've got, you know, uh, bio with 1 1, we got 3 Liberator, and wherever that tank was left, oh, that is underneath there. Oh, Gumio's just gonna get right on in there and not even going to focus on the army, going to take out that third base, and yep, there you go. Even having as much left, say, like, you know what, I am going to stay here and fight. And that's the scary thing about taking the third base in that position where really easily if you're pushed out of that Gumiho can just stem in when you see what, what his liberators did they basically closed the door on the left hand side ran in where if you take it at the other alternate third base yes it's a little bit farther away it's kind of scary to deal with lots of multi pronged harassment it's definitely a frontal attack it's a lot more potent against that third base Widowmine's burrow down big Widowmine hits actually do some friendly fire right here and it's getting to be a little bit of a scrappy fight but the continual push out of Gumiho is looking like once again it's just a little bit stronger he's currently at two to zero and there it is three to zero gumiho is now one game away from winning this best of seven ah gg very nice wow this is going very very quickly indeed ah oh, man this is just uh, this is a little bit brutal yeah once again, even though Seed was able to move out and get some damage done, Gumiho's control of his army in the mid-game, especially getting positions and finding angles to move through and punish Seed's third, is 
it's just so darn good. And as I said, it's literally like the path of least resistance with water. You know, you pour some water down on a piece of concrete and eventually gets to places it finds those little cracks that you don't even see. And that's what Gumiho does. He finds those cracks that you don't even see. He finds those trajectories, the angles, gets in there and just sets himself in there and then is able to snipe, whether it be tech in game one or economy in game two or the third base in game three, like we just saw. He's able to snipe something.